Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to enter the Matrix with Unreal Engine. You see, back about three months ago they released this uh, Matrix playable gameplay, showcases the capabilities of what Unreal Engine 5 is all about. Well last week when they released Unreal Engine 5, they also released the City Sample and that's what we're going to check out today. Now you can check this out yourself, just do be aware, it is gigantic. We'll get to some of those details in just a sec, but the sample is available in the Epic Marketplace. Obviously you need to use Unreal Engine 5 to check this out, uh, they have split it down into three categories too so if you just want to see the buildings the vehicles and the crowd uh, those are available as separate projects now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I mean by ginormous so here is the samples uh, 101.3 gigabytes in size yeah this is a monster when you go ahead and make a project out of this uh, you just killed 100 gigabytes of your hard drive plus 100 gigabytes for the assets themselves so if you want to download and spend 200 gigabytes of your drive you can do so or we can just check this video out where i'm going to showcase the example and i'm going to showcase some of the new features and functionality in unreal engine 5 and this is honestly i hate to use the term unreal but it really kind of is. So here we got a cityscape. Um, all of the buildings, by the way, were generated using Houdini. Uh, they do a really in-depth video, kind of walking through how all of that actually the process works. I'll show you how to use this demo yourself, some of the cool things uh, you can do to check it out, and some of the things you can do if your hardware isn't amazing. What you're seeing, this is running on a um, modern 12 series Intel processor with a uh, 3070 Ti. So a pretty modern beefy computer and it can still bring it to its knees at times. But this is the world we are dealing with and this shows a lot of the new features and functionality of Unreal Engine 5. Specifically um, Nanite, Lumen, and also we've got world partitioning. I'm going to show you that in a second. So um, let's go with Nanite first. It's pretty straightforward on the whole. Uh, I'll show you the uh, the visualization of it. What Nanite basically is, is a, a really powerful LOD system. So you can see the various different LODs being done here. You can see the actual raw triangles over here. Uh, and what it does is basically um, does automatic LOD levels for you or level of detail levels for you. So you can deal with an almost infinite amount of geometry. You can bring in your almost raw sculpted assets in like film ready format and it will make a game ready version for you. Now do keep in mind when you're working at a developer tool side of things, it's going to make the process a little bit more demanding, but that is the one thing going on here. The other thing we've got going on here is Lumen. Now Lumen is basically a real time global illumination system. You can see the Lumen scenes, the reflection scenes and the surface cache of the scene as we are navigating around. Uh, and Lumen is this new lighting system that basically means that you can just put light sources into the world and it takes care of it for you. There's no baking of shadow maps or anything like that. Uh, and it does a very impressive job on the whole. So that is uh, kind of two of the neat new features of Unreal Engine. Let's look at a third one now and that's world partitioning. Now you notice we've got this building, but if I go past this building and off into yonder, well, yonder is actually pretty empty. So you see we've got, uh, well, nothing over here. And you notice down here on the grid, we've got this area that we can see. Well, what I can do is I can grab a handful of cells like this, and I can say, okay, load those cells in. And now it's going to dynamically load in and stream in the data for these guys. So all of a sudden, oh, we got more world to go through. So if you've got these really large world environments, you can load them in uh, in various different partitions as you go. Uh, obviously, it's a way of, um, you know, making it so you can have larger and larger worlds all in one editing environment, but you only really need to focus on the areas you want. So if there's an area that I no longer need, I can basically select it, I can right click it, and I can say, okay, unload this cell, and boom, it is gone. So that is the new world partitioning system, uh, um, Nanite and Lumen all in action. And now let's see uh, this actual demo running. So this isn't really a full-blown game, but you're going to be kind of amazed at the number of systems that are actually at play here. So let's play this one, and uh, this actually takes a few seconds to get started, so I'm going to pause it for a second. Okay, here we go. So we're going to zoom down into the world view, and then we're going to be able to participate in the world at large. Now, you're going to notice this is actually getting choppier on my end, simply because uh, of the video recording. I'm actually taxing my video memory between running the demo, running Unreal Engine, and then uh, video recording at the same time. But here you can see the world that we're in. We can walk around in it, and it's more impressive than that. You're going to see, actually, there's birds and... and uh, cars in the world that are all participating and let's go and um, piss off some pedestrians so you can see they actually respond to you like so so there is quite a bit going on here a number of different um, pedestrians have been added let's run into this guy oh hey 
and they look at you like, hey, what the hell's wrong with you? Uh, you can also even go ahead and uh, fly at any point in time. So I'm going to hit X. Let's speed up, and we're going to go look at some of the traffic systems in place. So we see traffic running around in the world. Well, when we were looking at it in the editor, we had none of those things. Uh, those are being controlled by various different systems. I'll show you them in action. The cool thing is you've actually got physics, so you can, you can run into things. And you notice all of the vehicles are actually fully destructible. Um, the uh, chaos physics system is at work here. We can go up here onto the highway and cause even more carnage if we wish. Um, so there's a number of systems controlling everything. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and get access to some of these things. But you notice we've got buses in the world, we've got cars and so on. Let's go ahead and drive into this car. Boom! And hopefully it causes some carnage. Nah, it didn't. Alright, let's, let's run to the side of this bus if I, oh, I can't catch up. There. So everything does have mass, including you. And apparently you weigh slightly more than a car. Ooh, cop car. Boom! And then all the vehicles around will respond accordingly. All right, so that's it for the demo side of things. If you want to check this out yourself, but you don't have the most powerful PC in the world, what you're going to want to do is start up over here, Unreal Engine Settings, and you can go ahead and change the engine scalability settings. We're at cinematic right now. You can drop them down to medium, and you're going to immediately see a result. So let's go down to medium, and you'll see what happens. So look at the shadows and reflections here. This is kind of part of what Lumen's doing. And yeah, it's definitely... It's not as, as stunning to look at, uh, but it, it's smoother and will work much better on lower end hardware. By the way, if you want to check out the demo, but you don't want to go this full blown, uh, go into the content drawer and you'll notice under maps, there's also a small city level map. Uh, so if you want to check things out that way, that's a good place to start as well. So now we're here. Uh, let's go take a look at some of the things of interest. As I mentioned earlier on, the building layouts themselves uh, were created using sort of building blocks, a combination. And by the way, there's some really cool... Um, parallax um, texturing effects going on here uh, but they were created using the Houdini engine and imported in and out I'm not going to cover that aspect here uh, but you're also going to find a number of the things like this this courtyard right here is actually a prefab so you see here we've got this uh, plaza prefab going on we'll open it up you'll see what I'm talking about so here you can see uh, a lot of the things within the city are reusable, uh, but it's just straightforward, normal blueprints that you're working with. Um, and yeah, so you want to filter down here and kind of want to pay attention to some of the more interesting things. What you're going to probably want to do if you fire up the example is come in here and hit this little gear right here. And we're going to want to get rid of temporary actors. We're going to want to get rid of unloaded. Just basically get rid of almost everything. Have only in the current level. So then you're going to see just kind of a... Uh, uh, an overview of some of the more interesting stuff. So again, all of these little plaza setups. So let's go ahead and pick pick this guy right here. This is just a blueprint. So go above ground. So that that setup was a blueprint that was instantiated throughout the world. So you can see all these various different um, kind of prefab chunks are being put in here. But where we get kind of really interesting, let's go to the pedestrian. So that was um, was it walking? No. It was crowds. So we're going to come up here. We're going to search for crowds like so. And then you're going to feed here is the um, mass control crowd blueprint for spawning the people that go in our world. So we can go ahead. We can see uh, details of it right there. Parts of it are implemented, I believe, in C++. So we're not going to really go into that too much. But I'm going to come down here. And what you're going to see is you've got some neat fine-tuned controls over the spawning in the world. So you see here we got spawn. We're going to, how many things we can spawn? We got generators for basically creating uh, the various different humans in the world. So let's say we wanted to populate our world a lot more. So we're going to have a half a million people at this point in time. Now we're going to go ahead and see our demo in action. I will resume as soon as that is back. Okay, here we go. Now we are in a world with many more people as we are going to see. <laughs> as you probably saw as we were flying in. And yep, there are uh, a lot more people populating the world right now. Oh, I can't jump. I thought I could jump. So let's go annoy pedestrians. One of my favorite games. All right, here we go. As you can see, they're following the same details. They interact with each other. They interact with you. Uh, and you can add a whole lot more people to your world by setting up a single property. By the way, the same thing is true for the um, controls of the cars in the world as well. Uh, so that one is under traffic. Just filter up here for traffic. You're going to find there's a number of different ones. There's one for um, intersections, parked, and so on. The one we were interested in is actually cars in the world. So right now we have 17,000 cars in the world. I was actually going to add a whole lot more. 
Um, and then I, I found in an earlier demo of doing so, really all it did was uh, created a traffic jam, which was quite boring. It actually felt like a real city in that way. Uh, but here you can see what they've done is they're spawning a number of different vehicles. So you've got 13 elements in this array. So if you wanted to have your own additional cars in this scene, you could do so. You just come on down here um, and add one into this list. So we can see here we got a number of different vehicles. So we'll look at this first one. It is a bus of some form. So let's go down here. We'll find the item. So there is the data on it. But the key thing here is it's this blueprint right here that is controlling it. Go over here, take a look, and boom, it is a bus. And again, it is a very traditional blueprint setup. You can see how all these things work together to make these really complicated worlds. Some of these things are even modeled inside, which I found a little shocking, especially if you go through the other cars that are in the world. Um, and yeah, that that's kind of... A top level view of it, again, there's a lot of things at play here. This huge amount of geometry you're seeing, that is being handled by Nanite. The real-time lighting, especially here, watch as I go in and out of the building, uh, occluding the sun there in the background, you can see it at play. That there is the lumen system at action. Again, not really anything you have to do for either of those, which is actually kind of makes them quite cool. And then again, these really large worlds, those are all being handled using this world partition system. Uh, it is definitely a very impressive project. If you, again, come in here with more constrained hardware, just come on in here and change the scaling settings down. And do remember, there is this map here for showcasing the, the smaller view of the city. And on the topic of maps, if you actually go into the vehicle area, uh, there is a, a map literally just for, so come down here. Uh, you can just come in here. We're not going to save that. Load that one up. And this is a playground uh, four vehicles. So you see here we got various different ramps. We got a car that'll spawn in. So if you want to test and play with uh, cars and get the feeling right, uh, this map is for that. So again, remember you can grab the vehicles independently. So we can come down here in the world and we can just basically boot around. So what I'm going to do is come to the end of the pylons or end of the barricades over here, do a handbrake turn poorly, and then we're going to go up that ramp and we're going to cause a spectacular crash. So if you want, this is also available in there. I think this oops, didn't quite make it up the ramp. There we go. We're there. Uh, here. And that is the destruction system in action as well. Although the camera does flake out a bit. I don't know if we're going to see our car ever again. Probably not. So if you want to look at just the vehicle stuff, by the way, you can download it separately. But if you grab the whole thing, do be aware that that guy is in there as well. And there is that other map. That's probably your starting point. Come on in here. Um to maps, and if you want smaller machine, you can start off with small city. It, it's the same kind of thing, but it's just kind of shrunk down. Should work a little bit better um, on a little bit lower end hardware. I'll let that load one second. There we go. So it's basically just a smaller game world example. You can notice it over here too. There's a lot less going on in that regard. Um, and this r should run quite a bit uh, better for you. Um, so yeah, so check out the small city map as well. Uh, again, you can load more in as you need it. Just kind of come on over here and load the selected cells in like so. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the city sample from the Matrix running in Unreal Engine 5. And I have to say, I'm, it's pretty mind-blowing. It definitely is next-generation hardware, uh, but it's also next-generation game development. The combination of all of these new technologies is pretty exciting, and I think this example does a really good job of showing that off. But let me know what you think of this example of Unreal Engine 5 in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.